Lisa. Yes, baby girl. When I grow up, I want to be a woman to society. And so shall you be. Hey, this is Lisa Landry. Welcome back to One Menace to Society. I'm so stoked to speak to today's guest. She's a medical intuitive, a holistic mental health practitioner. Please welcome Judy Meyer. Hi, Lisa. Thanks so much for having me. I'm thrilled to be on your show. Judy, thank you so much for being here. I'm so happy to speak with somebody who's an HHP. What does that credential mean exactly? Well, it is a holistic health practitioner, and I'm also an NHC, which means natural health consultant. How do you become a natural health consultant? I took courses, I studied, uh, and got the certification. It took maybe uh, probably two years for me to get those. That's a long time. Yeah. Well, it was fun because I, I was actually learning things in my courses that I really wanted to learn. I also have a degree from UCSB, but it wasn't nearly as thrilling as learning about all these natural health things that could help people. So, What made you decide to go into that area of like a non-traditional approach to helping people? When I was 19 years old, I was put on Prozac. I have a family history of depression. My grandmother actually took her own life. So there's oh. a big history of mental illness in my family. So I was suffering from that, from depression, severe depression as a teenager. And when I was put on Prozac, I actually attempted to take my own life. So that's when I knew medication is not the answer for depression. I'm really <laughs> sorry I, to hear all that, that you've struggled through those things. I'm sorry. Oh, you know, when I look back at it now, I think of it as my greatest gift. So when you are healed, this is what happens, is you can look back and say, oh, I'm so happy that happened to me, and I went through those struggles because then I can help other people. So it was actually a good blessing for me, and I know it's difficult to hear that when people are depressed at the moment, but for me, looking back 20 years later, it was, it was a real blessing for me. You offer clients alternative treatments for depression. Is it because of what you've been through? That's your catalyst? Yes, absolutely. So I spent the next 20 years of my life looking into alternative mental health solutions and what could I do to lift this depression that was genetic. So I looked into and studied everything possible. I tried every different thing there was to try. Uh, and I do consider myself healed now. That's fantastic. What are some of the things that you had to try? Or were they prescribed to you or were they just things you heard about and thought, maybe this will work? Let me check it out. <laughs> Right, the latter. I was like, okay, acupuncture, let me try that. That didn't really work very well for me. It does work well for some people. You know, colonics, pretty much every different thing you could try. That's what I did in an attempt to feel better. And I think that's what people are doing now. Also, just going online and looking up alternative treatments for depression. But the thing is, is they're missing the thing that worked the best for me. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you what that is. Yes. That is amino acid therapy. It's taking an orthomolecular approach, which means finding the right nutrients for your body. So not a lot of people are talking about this, and this is what I specialize in. Yeah, I've never heard of this, orthomolecular <laughs> approach. Yes. So it was a term that was coined by Linus Pauling, and it just, again, means finding the right nutrients for your correcting your issues in your body. And a lot of people who are genetically predisposed to mental illness, anxiety, and depression have a need for more of certain targeted nutrients than other people. Amino acids. I don't think many of us have even considered that we might have amino acid deficiencies and that's influencing our mental health. Yes. It's so interesting because that is the one thing that I really felt that helped me the most and that not a lot of people are talking about and practitioners are not trained in. Well, yeah, because what do we know about amino acids? I mean, it's like a, a science question when you're trying to do your SATs, <laughs> basically, right? For, right. All, for those of us who are not scientifically or medically inclined? The building blocks of protein. Okay. So um, there's many different amino acids. Some are known as essential and some are non-essential. So some that you can make in your body and some you have to get outside from, mostly from animal products. Beyond that, uh, certain people genetically need more nutrients than others. Like with my family history, I need more of certain nutrients, B6, zinc, magnesium, uh, and different amino acids like GABA. So uh, these different components, you kind of have to put the pieces together and it's like a little puzzle to figure 
figure out your individual situation. So once you started benefiting from these amino acid treatments, how long did it take until you started noticing differences? Well, amino acids are incredible because you can notice things right away. For instance, within minutes. So I, this makes me think of just one in particular, which is called DLPA, mm -hmm. which is a combination of two different amino acids. And this particular amino acid has an 85% success rate in treating severe depression. So in blind studies, people who were severely depressed were given DLPA, and 85% of them, their depression lifted. So this is an incredible statistic, and no pharmaceutical has that kind of success rate. Well, why don't we know more about this? <laughs> Well, uh, the pharmaceutical companies don't necessarily want you treating uh, illness without their products. You know, it kind of comes down to that. I know that seems kind of conspiracy theory oriented, but that's actually the truth. They, well, you they, know, uh, they I don't. Suppressed. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say it sounds so conspiratorial as pragmatic. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes, it does. Right. Exactly. You know. So. The other thing with DLPA is it's not right for everybody, so people shouldn't just run out and get that one particular thing, but look into the amino acids that would be best for them. You're a holistic depression coach. What does that mean? That means that I help people who want to lift their depression without using pharmaceuticals find the right method for their situation. And it's very personal and it's very individual. Uh, there's a variety of different root causes from thyroid issues to amino acid deficiency to heavy metal overload, all these different root causes. So mm -hmm. we, I try to get to the root of what is going on with someone and then, and then correct it without medication. Well, that would make sense that everybody's going to have a different situation, right? Because it, it can't just be right. cookie cutter. So that does make sense. And do you take your clients outdoors? I know that outdoors, uh, nature can be a very healing thing, and many of us don't just get enough sunlight. Absolutely. That's a huge part of it. Um, so vitamin D therapy, getting uh, sun on your skin without sunscreen is important, and also getting sunlight into your eyes. There's very re important research by a man named John Ott that showed that uh, getting Sunlight into your cornea and your retina is incredibly important to overall health. Um, and so we haven't been told that, and we're all wearing sunglasses. So an interesting connection. Yeah, I wear, I wear big old sunglasses that wrap around because I don't want the crow's feet, and I like to be outside a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, take them off for 10 minutes a day and let the sun into your eyes. But we don't look directly at the sun, right? <laughs> like, no, no, no. <laughs> legal disclaimer, legal disclaimer. <laughs> but um, I guess, yeah, we should be outdoors a little bit more often with our sunglasses off of our faces to yes. get, yeah, the benefit of all that good vitamin D. Why would someone choose a natural route for de treating depression or anxiety over taking pills? There are so many side effects of pharmaceuticals. And the withdrawals of benzodiazepines in particular are intense. They were meant for, so this would include Xanax and Klonopin and, and other drugs in that family. Mm-hmm. But people right now, if you look at some of the withdrawal groups, are going through horrific side effects and withdrawals trying to get off these medications. So not only are there side effects uh, and withdrawal possibilities, but also it doesn't get to the root cause. So just putting pharmaceuticals on top of a magnesium deficiency isn't going to do anything. Judy, you say that most mental health issues come down to two main factors. Can you explain what those are? Yes. So I think that it comes down to two main things. One is an overload of toxins, and the other is nutrient deficiencies. So the overload of toxins come from all different places, you know, the air, the fluoride in the water, medical interventions, the food that we're eating, GMOs. Uh, so we're being bombarded constantly with toxins. So it's very hard for a body to function being overloaded with toxins, both physically and mentally. Yeah. So that's the first root cause. And then the second is that we're very low in nutrients. Despite our move to eating healthy, 
the food doesn't have the same kind of nutrients as it used to have because of overgrowing and soil depletion of very trace minerals. So we're going around and we're eating, but we're still hungry. We're actually just suffering a lot from malnutrition as a society because our food doesn't have the same kind of nutrients that it once did. How important is the food that we eat for our bodies to run efficiently and our minds to function properly? It is important, and uh, it's important not to have GMO foods. It's important to eat organic because, again, of the toxic overload possibilities. But again, I think... I've actually been seeing a big rash of vegans lately. So the vegans are coming in with depression. They've been lifelong vegans. And I was a vegan myself once, uh, and it just didn't do very well for my body. So I've found that people who have a predisposition for anxiety or depression don't do very well on that diet. So when we start to eat meat or drink bone broth or get really high quality animal products like grass-fed beef and raw dairy, then their depression lifts very, very quickly. So mm-hmm. that just comes down to the amino acids. It really does. So it's you, an interesting component that I've been seeing lately. You know, I can verify that personally because I'm primarily vegan. I eat eggs every now and then, but mm-hmm. um, I do notice if I am feeling very depressed, I will eat a piece mm-hmm. of chicken. Because I do it for medicinal purposes. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, I'm not yep. doing it because, like, oh, I'm hungry, so let me go down to Popeye's and get a two-piece. But um, I'll be like, oh, my gosh, I need some B vitamins because I am feeling lethargic and down. So right. I, I completely agree with what you're saying there. It's kind of a touchy subject because if you've read about the mistreatment of animals. Yeah, right. Which I have, <laughs> yeah. You know, you don't want that to happen. You don't want to support that. But if it's a matter of you being depressed and possibly taking, you know, really bad turn for a direction that you don't want to go in mentally um, versus eating some chicken then, uh, or, eating some bo- or drinking some bone broth, I would always advise people to choose themselves first, really. Uh, your yeah. health is so important. I would agree with you. I think a lot of us, though, are disconnected from what our bodies actually want and need. And we're just yes. going through the mechanics of, I'm supposed to eat this salad. I'm supposed to eat this oatmeal. I'm supposed to cook a roast for my family. What are some holistic cures for anxiety, Judy? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. I'm actually writing a book on this right now. Oh, it's cool. It's to be published. I'm going to self-publish on Amazon. So it'll be out soon. It's called Natural Solutions for Anxiety. And it comes with a one-month protocol. So I just did this study, this kind of informal study with volunteers, where I had them do a month-long protocol, and uh, just getting results in now. And one person started with a level of nine anxiety. Wow. And just finished up the study with a level of two. So I'm very excited about the possibility that there are very easy, simple things that people can do that don't involve pharmaceuticals that will heal anxiety. I'll just give you a few of them. Sure. One, one, the first and the most important thing is magnesium. Magnesium is known as the calming mineral, and 80% of the population is low on my, magnesium. So there's different magnesium products that you can get transdermally through the skin. I don't recommend usually taking a magnesium supplement because most people have gut health issues and it doesn't digest very well. So getting magnesium through the skin, you can get magnesium soap, you can get magnesium lotion, or you can take Epsom salt bath. Ooh. So all, yeah, so magnesium is a key to healing anxiety. So getting magnesium into your body in as many ways as possible is crucial to reversing anxiety very simply, very low cost, and it's really effective. So a good uh, Epsom salt soak with some candlelight and maybe a glass of wine? <laughs> <laughs> the wine part, but definitely the soak, for sure. Um, And another thing you can do is GABA. So GABA is a calming amino acid, and they have those sublingually, and you can kind of keep those in your purse for panic attacks to put um, underneath your tongue and dissolve, and most of my clients find very quick relief with just in in a few minutes by sucking on a GABA tablet. So, yeah, so these are things that people need to know and are being you know, not talked about. So it's using the right nutrient for the right situation. Yeah, that's super cool because I have a pre-roll. That's where I go when I'm feeling stressed out. (laughs) I have a Mm -hmm. medical card (laughs) prescribed to me by a physician um, encouraging me to use a plant when I am 
PTSD or stressed or anxiety ridden or what. But I would think GABA would be a really great alternative because it is. obviously you can put that in your mouth and drive your car. <laughs> exactly. And the other thing is the, uh, the, the medicinal prescription depletes serotonin. So there are natural amino acids also that you can take to increase your serotonin level including 5-HTP, which is another amino acid. So it might be good if you are a smoker or, um, you know, uh, are interested and in use medicinal marijuana to also increase your serotonin levels. Serotonin <laughs> is the feel-good chem- the feel good neurotransmitter, so it's the one that really regulates our mood, especially for depression. Huh. So GABA. Yeah, amino acids are very, very safe. They're extremely safe because they're natural to the body mm-hmm. and they're water soluble, so you can't really overdo them. However, that being said, you want to take precaution before using them in conjunction with a prescription if you're already taking one. So, by themselves, they're very safe and um, effective, but don't combine them before doing research. That that would make sense. Yeah. And you can't overdose on amino acids, right? I mean, that's what I'm hearing. Is that right? right? It's what, right, that's right. They're water soluble, so they're very safe and they're effective, and there's very few side effects. So win, win, win. <laughs> As somebody who suffered from depression, which you obviously have in the past, mm-hmm. and uh, you've got this family history, and now you have all this insight because you have literally been through the fire yourself. What is the most important thing you'd want to share with somebody who's listening right now who might be suffering greatly with depression? Well, I've been there. Uh, It's a terrible place to be. But I do, my main thing that I tell people is that they don't need to take medication, that there are many, many effective solutions that are natural. And it's really hard to kind of do research when you're in that state and be like, okay, I have to figure this out. But it's worth it for the long term because there's such huge side effects of medication. So Doctors and psychiatrists are really quick to prescribe, but they're not really warning people of side effects. So that concerns me. It concerns me that people are kind of coming blindly into medication without being properly informed about the possible long-term effects. Yeah, I read a stat on your site that bothers me greatly, um, speaking about medication and depression. Um, You said or stated on your website, one course of antibiotics increases risk of depression. That's one course of antibiotics can increase your risk of depression. And many of us take way more than one course of antibiotics. Our children might need them for a cycle or two. So what does that translate into statistically? If one cycle can cause this depression, that's an astronomical number of possible cases of depression, right? Right, and we're seeing that in society. Almost everyone is depressed or anxious, and it is a direct result of you know toxin overload and nutrient deficiencies. So what happens is when you take antibiotics, it wipes out the good bacteria in your gut, and then an overload of the negative bacteria can um, overtake your gut. And 80% of your serotonin, the feel-good chemical, is made in your gut, and 50% of your dopamine is made there. So if you've got imbalances in your gut, you're going to also have imbalances in your mental health. So it's called the gut-brain access, and there's a lot of research that shows the connection between gut health and mental health. Um, The thing you can do is really work on your gut health by taking probiotics, um, eating fermented foods, really building up the good bacteria in your gut, and it will resolve itself. There are a lot of different options for antibiotics that are natural, so people don't have to take antibiotics. I'll give you three. Uh, One is colloidal silver. That's an excellent natural antibiotic. It kills MRSA, uh, which is the, I know, it's amazing. Wow. So so colloidal silver is a great way to go. Also, oil of oregano is a very effective natural antibiotic, and also vitamin C. Uh, high quantities of vitamin C, which is water soluble, very effective in fighting infection, disease. Um, What should somebody do if, okay, say that somebody's on medication currently and they're not really, they're not really vibing on this medication, but this is their best chance as explained to them by their doctor. And they're thinking, (laughs) maybe I want to try getting off of this. Should they talk to their doctor first and then start checking out different, what should they do? Check with your doctor. You want to go very, very slowly. Uh, it's called a 
of a taper is what it's called. Mm -hmm. So you want to just gradually, very slowly reduce off the medication. And if you do this cold turkey, you just stop taking it. It can have very serious consequences. So you never want to do that. Yeah. But there's a couple different resources that I can share. Um, There's a lot of Facebook groups that are just according to whatever medication you're taking. There's support groups that are people who are coming off the medication. So it will give you an idea of what to expect and kind of things that you can do during your taper. So that's a nice community to have. Uh, There's also something called the Ashton Manual, which is kind of the industry standard for coming off of medication, very helpful there. Uh, There's also a group called BenzoBuddies.org if you're coming off of benzodiazepines. That's one of the hardest ones to come off of because of the damage that it does to your brain. You're in California, and I I don't want to profile but how hard would it be for somebody in Kansas to find out about amino acids and going to see a doctor who might know more about these alternative treatments? Are they available yeah. to people in different regions? It's kind of rare. Yeah. Uh, I do Skype sessions, so I'm happy oh, cool. to help anyone via Skype. Yeah. So how does a Skype appointment work? Well, I send the person a couple different forms, and they fill them out. So I... I um, get their entire health history, um, and I can look and see what kind of red flags there are, you know, if they've had previous uh, surgeries or what kind of medication they're on, uh, you know, if they've had antibiotics, things like that. And then I can recommend different products for them, different amino acids. Uh, I don't sell anything. I just recommend them, and then they go out and buy them. Um, And then I follow up to make sure that, you know, things are getting better and we can make tweaks on the protocols. Uh, and that's pretty much how it works. It's really easy and simple. Um, and uh, I love working with people and helping them to feel better. And, and they don't have to go through the, the kind of struggle that I went through for so many years. <laughs> right. <laughs> Let me get you there quicker. Come here. So where do we find out more about you, Judy Meyer? Well, I am on Instagram. That's my favorite place to post. And I post there all the time, probably, um, you know, several times a day with helpful info, I try to give as much free resources and information as possible. And my handle there is holistic underline depression underline coach, holistic depression coach. I love Instagram. (laughs) Um, I'm also on Twitter, and that's at Alt Mental Health. And mostly there I I post links to studies about nutritional mental health. So if you're more interested in the research aspect, follow me on Twitter. And then, of course, I've got two websites. One is holisticdepressioncoach.com. That's my personal site. And then I've got a free resource site that I started, and it's called alternativementalhealthrevolution.com. And on that site, I attempt to provide information to people about all the different alternative mental health resources that there are. Thanks, y'all, for listening. Please come back to Next One Menace Wednesday. You can find me on my website, lisalandry.com. Shout out, Ari. I love you, little boo-boo.